Welcome back. In the previous tutorial, we have discussed how to create a fountain like this. The tutorial link is given below. Please watch it before you continue here. So we have added an emitter object hidden inside the lotus, and we have also enabled a particle physics for this emitter. Now, in order to control the height of this fountain, we have to change this velocity in the z direction. So if we want to drive the intensity of this fountain based on a music file, we have to animate this z velocity. Let's say we want to use this music file for our animation, so open it in a software like Audacity, and select the whole track. Then from the edit menu duplicate the track and then select this second track. Now go to the effect menu, go to volume and select limiter. Let's enter minus 1 in this threshold field and use all other default values. Then again go to the effect menu and invert the clip from here. Then select both the tracks together from the select menu and from the tracks menu go to mix and select mix and render. Then again go to the effect menu and from volume select amplify. Use the highest volume possible without any clipping to the audio. So we'll get the peaks isolated like this, and it'll help us in the animation. Now go to the file menu and export the audio. We have to save this file with a new name. Now back to Blender, select the emitter object and click on this small button in order to add a keyframe to the Z velocity. The actual value for this field does not matter. We just need a keyframe so that we can see it in the graph editor. You should be able to see an entry for the particle system we have. Now press N on your keyboard to hide the side panel and go to the first frame. It's important to be on frame number one for the next step. Now go to the channel menu and select sound to samples. Here we have to select the music file we prepared. Don't select the original music. Select the new file we created in Audacity. Then we have to change these two fields to maybe 0.1 so that we get a relatively noiseless graph or a smooth graph for the peaks in our music. Now go to the channel menu and select samples to keys. It will convert the graph into many such keyframes, but we need to enlarge it in height in order to get a meaningful bounce. The height of the fountain depends on the peak height of this curve, so we will pull it up, but first change the pivot point to 2D cursor. Then press S, then Y, type 40 and hit enter. We have to ensure that the maximum height is between 10 to 15. But we need a smooth graph here, so press Alt plus O together on your keyboard to make it smooth. You may need to repeat it several times to get it very smooth, but we have to enlarge the graph to this level once again. So let's again press S, then Y, type 5 and hit Enter. But some of the peaks are now beyond the value of 12, so we need to trim them off along this line. So press the N key to bring the side panel and go to the modifiers tab. Then add a modifier called limits. We have to use this max Y field, so enable it, and let's enter a value like 12 in this field. It will trim the curve, and we also get some flat tops, which is necessary for the kind of animation we need for the Z velocity. Now we can go back to our viewport, but before we test our fountain, we need to also play the music together. So let's add a speaker. We need to be at frame number one, when we add the speaker object. And as it is highlighted in the outliner, go to the speaker tab and click on the open button. This time, we need to select the original music file, since it sounds better. Then in the playback menu, we have to change this option to sync to audio. If we now run the animation, the speaker will play the music simultaneously. But we can see that the animation is not in sync with the music. That is because the particles take some time to jump in the air after they are created. That means the keyframes that we have added to out emitter should go in advance compared to the sound file. And in order to do that, we have to go back to the graph editor and we need to move all the keyframes together toward the left. So press G, then X, type minus 15 and enter. Use 15 or 20 based on your frame rate and now we'll test it again from the beginning. So it looks better this time, but you can always make it far better with some careful manual edits of this graph. You can manipulate these peaks and their timing for even more perfect result. But graph editing is not within the scope for this tutorial. We have separate tutorials for that and the links are given below. Then finally, we need to bake the physics from here. And once complete, we can render the scene.
So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.